am Tamika Vijay Surya from the Bandaranaike Center for International Studies, Colombo, Sri Lanka. Today we are privileged to be interviewing Professor Sirimal Abeyratna for our BCIS International Affairs Review Volume 1, Issue 4 on Global Recession and Economic Crisis. Professor Abeyratna is a senior lecturer at the Department of Economics, University of Colombo. He is also a visiting fellow at universities in Japan, Australia, Italy and Vietnam. He has also served as a consultant in many government agencies, corporate sector agencies and international organizations. Professor Abeyratna, in your view, uh, what are the prospects uh, Sri Lanka has in terms of overcoming this crisis and will Sri Lanka be able to uh, bring under control its inflation rate and stabilize the uh, foreign exchange rate? Right. Uh, thanks, Jamika, for the invitation to be here. Uh, I would say that uh, our recovery uh, from this crisis situation, it may take quite a long time, from five to ten years time, if we want to come back to where we were by 2018 and 19 those years. So it's a, a quite a long period and also I would say that we are still not out of the danger. Uh, now we see that there are no uh, fuel queues and gas queues and uh, there's a little bit of relief uh, when we go around. But it doesn't mean that now we are out of the danger because this is only temporary thing. Why I say that? Because we haven't started any programs yet, recovery programs yet. We have done here and there a couple of things. Preparatory work is going on, but really we haven't done anything to uh, overcome the crisis. And therefore, it might take, as I said, uh, from medium to long term period, maybe even about 10 years to come back to our situation as we were. Uh, the basically, our uh, crisis that we have faced with, as you categorically said, it is a foreign exchange crisis, foreign exchange crisis and crisis build up slowly and then the collapse is instant and the collapse requires many triggering factors and we had all of them in 2019 as well as in 2020. Uh, but we came to that point, that vulnerable point over a long period of time, 20, 25 year period. Uh, making Sri Lanka so much vulnerable to the external shocks because we didn't generate enough foreign exchange. That is where the basic major problem that we are facing. So to address that issue again requires policy reforms and export generation, uh, export uh, promotion as well as then uh, foreign direct investment inflows. So only with these things, these couple of things, we would be able to overcome this problem. Budget speech uh, has mentioned that economic reforms are necessary and they will not be limited to what the IMF recommended. Uh, what are your views on this? What the President has said in his budget speech is absolutely correct. And that's exactly what I was also emphasizing that our basic problem is foreign exchange crisis, which cannot be uh, answered within, within the limited period and within the 12 month budget, government budget. That's exactly why President also mentioned that it requires economic reforms. Whereas the IMF program, if you look at the, all the elements there, it is mostly uh, aiming at fiscal consolidation. That is the, the, the government revenue and government expenditure. And in addition, uh, also to support that uh, the market-based pricing mechanism for certain uh, fundamental uh, government monopoly such as fuel, electricity and I think they have done some of these things already and SOE, state-owned enterprise reforms and new thing has been added that is uh, 
reducing corruption vulnerability as far as the basic problem that is the foreign exchange crisis is concerned there is only one line in the uh, staff level agreement of the IMF that is uh, to build up the foreign exchange reserves and to maintain flexible exchange rate but it doesn't specify what we have to do because it's not that we can okay tomorrow overnight we can do this thing and we build foreign reserves and we move into flexible exchange rate we can't do that under these conditions so how to do that is not with the imf it is with us so that's exactly why president has said this yes uh, in a recent article you had mentioned that the uh, budget 2023 is a reformist budget uh, do you think uh, the budget has reflected adequately on the existing uh, reality, ground realities in Sri Lanka, especially the socio-economic and political context? It has not adequately addressed all these issues, uh, but it has been a reformist budget. In fact, I would say that if we uh, had brought this kind of budget about 10-12 years ago, after ending the uh, war in that was in 2009 yeah. and if we had this kind of budget started at that time probably I would say that we would not have been in this trouble that we are in today because that's why I mentioned that it's a reformist budget what we have uh, got used to is uh, populist budgets and yeah. populist budget means all people look at from their different different angles and they say that uh, they look at it the relief side and they also say that co oh, we don't have relief in this budget and depending on their interest depending on their requirements they say that so the budgets also used to address this kind of populi populist populist uh, requirement but however this budget has deviated significantly from that and it has outlined how our economic reforms should move on and I remember that it mentioned, he mentioned their uh, export economy, green and blue economy and digital economy, these three ideas are there. Yeah. They are there, uh, which means actually it has aimed at, it has proposed some fundamental changes, reforms in our policy and regulatory environment and how to do this. And that's why I say that this is a reformist budget. Although the reforms may not be within the budget, but budget has specified them and the budget will support them so that at least next year in one month time we have to start all these reforms. Yes, yes. Uh, the budget has also proposed uh, for a social security net for the most vulnerable and also for the middle classes who have been affected by the cost of living. Uh, what uh, in your opinion uh, should the government do like how should it proceed to ensure uh, such a mechanism in a just and efficient way? I think uh, government has addressed uh, the poor and the vulnerabilities. Our, we don't have uh, real-time data to tell you that what is the level of poverty in Sri Lanka right now and what is the level of vulnerability and all these uh, statistics come maybe a couple of months or years later so that we don't have and we don't even have a mechanism to gather real-time data so far in our country if it is in other country they would have within a couple of days they, and within the mouse in the mouse click they can say that okay our poverty level has gone this much and this many number of people have lost the jobs and lost the income they have become poor they have become vulnerable all these things are just with the mouse click. But in Sri Lanka, you have to conduct surveys. Yeah. And then survey results have to be analyzed. And then the reports come about a year later. And then the, everything is gone already. However, I think government has mentioned there. Even the IMF uh, staff level agreement has also mentioned uh, the special attention to take care of the poor and take care of the vulnerable groups of the society which has actually enormously increased due to uh, the loss of economic activities collapse of businesses loss of the jobs and livelihoods and incomes 
and on the other hand uh, the increase in increase in prices which never happened throughout our post independent history and we have seen uh, the everyone's income although they get the same number of uh, rupee notes 1000 not 5000 not into their hands and as far as the expenses are concerned i think they have lost about uh, they have lost about maybe uh, two third two third of their uh, real income by this time that means actually someone who earn 100000 today he should think that his income is actually in real term not more than 30000 so this kind of situation i can understand that there is enormous increase in poverty level and the vulnerability level in this economy so it is a responsibility of the government of a responsible government to address this issue not for political reason but because it is a responsibility of the government but i would say that even to address this problem we should have proper information so that is where we are lacking uh, but even with that deficiency i think the government has proposed uh, various measures to increase might be very small thing and not mm. significant not big enough to uh, take care of the poor and the vulnerable but anyway according to the capacity of the government at the moment the mm. government has uh, undertaken this task also okay uh thank you professor uh the budget has also proposed tax hikes for fuel uh, cigarettes and tobacco and also introduced a new wealth tax uh, a new super gain tax new capital gain tax modified surcha- surcharge tax land tax personal property tax corporate tax and capital gains tax how will these uh, new uh, newly introduced taxes impact the business community in sri lanka and how will the business environment itself be affected i think uh, now this is a very vulnerable situation for everybody although everybody is not poor and the government is almost bankrupt and the bankrupt government can also bankrupt the nation businesses that is the reality in the world but however how to get out of the crisis uh stability economic stability should support it so economic stability in the first place it comes from the government revenue and expenditure over the years what we have seen is sri lankan tax revenue is around last two years of course uh, we can say that due to covid pandemic and other issues it has come down to 8% 9% of gdp but even before that it had been somewhere around 11% 12% of gdp even with all these tax hikes what you mentioned for the estimated budget uh, the government revenue for next year is also going to be not much 11% 11.3% but which means actually we are far behind most of the our neighboring countries in terms of the government revenue we should i don't mind that government revenue going up to 15% to 20% and it has to be so why we should pay taxes because we are living in a civilized society so taxes should be paid and the people the nation should get the returns for those taxes with efficient and effective government services delivered to the people and there may be problems there but we have to uh, pay taxes the problem is now if you take income tax personal income tax uh, everywhere these days it is discussed it is being discussed that we have less than 300000 income tax files with the indian revenue department less than 300000 for a population with uh, 22 million people i guess that this has to be in millions of files mm. so which means actually less than 300000 people in this country pay direct taxes i'm i'm not surprised if they all are very angry because there are millions of free millions of free riders mm. receiving all the benefits but not paying the taxes so this is a whole problem 
regarding the tax. So that's why I think even in the budget plan it has been mentioned that everybody who, uh, who is uh, 18 years old should have tax right. But again I have the question that whether the Inland Revenue Department has the capacity to handle because if you get old people about uh, more than 18 years of old, uh, old than 18 years and I'm sure there will be about 15 million people, 15 million tax files. Do we have the technology to handle that? Do we have the capacity to handle that? It's a question because we haven't done enough in the past to generate our direct tax income. We haven't done enough. The basic problem that the government has faced over the years is that the government does not know people's income and wealth. And the government has been very lazy to establish an effective uh, technology-based system like in other countries to get the information about people's income and wealth. I'm sure many people, many would have problems of explaining their income and explaining their wealth when, they, when we have a system as such. So because of that, the kind of tax revisions that have been introduced this time, uh, quite uh, substantial as you mentioned, various ways. So as far as the business impact on over the business is concerned, I think we have to sort out much more uh, regulatory problems improving our business environment and not with taxes but doing that. So if we don't tax, where do we get money? We have to cut down also expenditure substantially. So even with that kind of increase in taxes, uh, even in this budget I have seen our budget deficit is 2,400 billion rupees. So it is scary situation even for next year. So what can the government do to encourage uh, the export se sector? Okay, uh, now export sector I would say that even the president I remember mentioned about Vietnam. Vietnam industrial minister who visited Sri Lanka in 1991 just few years after <coughs> Vietnam started their policy reforms and at that time industrial minister in Sri Lanka was the present president himself so they have met why the Vietnam minister came here to learn about our open economy and our industrialization process and to apply it in Vietnam because we have started that in 1977 so by early 1990s we have uh, we have improved quite a lot in terms of exports. In fact, we had replaced our primary exports with industrial exports by that time. Our majority of major part of more than half of our exports were manufactured export at that time. So the Vietnam wanted to learn it. Now I will put it in a perspective. Uh, by that time, Sri Lanka was exporting about four or five billion dollars worth exports. Vietnam was also exporting about four or five billion dollars worth export. We were in the similar level. Although Vietnam had mostly primary export like rice and fish. Last year, how much we exported? Twelve and a half billion. How much Vietnam exported? Three hundred thirty-five billion. So you can understand how far we have fallen back mm -hmm. with that. So if we want to make a change, we need to undertake reforms. And how do we undertake reforms? Exports will not rise without foreign investment. Why? We need to make a big change. And to do that big change, there is no shortage of investment funds in the world. And only thing that we need is to open the door, give the conducive environment for that floodgate after we open the floodgates for the foreign investment to come in. But actually, <coughs> we have a problem. What is the problem? Uh, even we, our people, 
some of our people they protest against foreign investment but they don't protest against foreign borrowings <laughs> quite strange isn't it so we need to welcome foreign investment and we need to uh, reform our regulatory environment and then establish a conducive business environment in this country because investors need confidence because they have a wide range of choices whether to come to sri lanka or go to uh, india or bangladesh i will put it that also in a perspective last year now we are in the middle of a global crisis now in that crisis the top 3 foreign direct investment recipient countries in the world all three are in asia number 1 china 180 billion so you don't look at only the prosperity of china very fast development you should also look at where it come from for in investment 180 billion last year alone the second country the second country which attracted the highest uh, second highest amount of foreign investment we always talk about that country singapore there is no even square meter to do any construction there such a compact compress land smaller than colombo district 99 billion foreign investment last year alone the third country we everybody would surprise to hear that our neighbor india 45 billion foreign investment came to india and how much we got sri lanka half a billion so you can understand we are far behind many of our neighbors even in terms of receiving foreign investment if we don't get foreign investment we will not generate exports we can do that uh, there's a saying that you save send by send and little by little and collect and collect and, and then you invest if you can wait for 200 years that's okay but i am not sure with our people our young people those who are coming out of schools and they have great hopes to be in a rich country to be in a developed country to build a family to build houses to buy a motor vehicle can they wait 200 years oh we can do it within 20 years with foreign investment so it's a choice is ours Uh, so many economists worldwide predict that a uh, economic recession is upcoming in, in in the year 2023 so what will the impacts be on upon sri lanka if there is such a yes. recession yes now that's a big topic if you look at the history of economic recession in the world uh, about 10 12 years old and some of the uh, important turning points in the recent and past has been the uh, us financial crisis that started in 2008 and then in the uh, 2010 and 11 and 12 those years the foreign debt crisis in eurozone that is another turning point and then we came to this covid pandemic issue uh the global health crisis led economic crisis that is in 2020 so with all these things after 2008 until today the global economy is in crisis and the crisis is getting worse now again although there were temporary recovery periods it is getting worse now in crisis situations actually if you look at the uh, the previous one that is the global financial crisis uh started in the usa asia did not get affected by that what is the reason the reason is in fact the 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 usa japan the all the rich countries the western europe they all got affected by this crisis and if you look at the statistics it is very clear it was a crisis mainly in rich countries advanced countries and developing countries got affected 
at uh, lower degrees but asia actually escape that's why we didn't feel that the reason has been the the turning of global investment flows towards asia so where it come from the foreign investment the foreign capital usa japan western europe so the capital outflow started from these countries it is a symptom it is a feature of recessions economic crisis also during the crisis time capital flows out which actually makes the which makes the uh, recessions even fast and therefore i see that there has been a global shift in the production processes from western countries towards asia as a result of capital leaving those countries and entering asian countries but sri lanka we don't feel it because we we we, we skip that uh, uh, to benefit from that so the this is like the two sides of the same coin the recession in the west and rise of asia the two things took place for the same reason mm. similarly if we diversify if we open up our market this is a smaller country compared to india or china if we open up our uh, economy and if we establish uh, business friendly conducive environment there will be capital inflows out of the economic crisis in the world economy and that will make us not to be vulnerable to those crises and if we can also diversify our markets from western europe from usa to particularly i think we have the market potential market in the east asian region so with those things i think there is a hope for sri lanka countries like us even to benefit from global crisis so uh, moving back to the economic crisis uh, in sri lanka and ensuring accountability uh, why was uh, sri lanka unable to uh, avoid this crisis despite many economists warning about uh, market borrowings and loans uh, uh, taken by governments and despite having introduced the fiscal management responsibility act in 2003 I remember uh, I was right in those days uh, when the Greece collapse uh, that happened in 20 the the worst period was from 2011 to 2012 the the debt crisis of Greece and uh, interest rate rose to about 35% and in Sri Lanka also now the interest rates are around that price and then uh, i wrote those days uh, because we and greece uh, we have many similarities also uh, like the government spending and they borrow and spend and feed the people and we also did the same thing here in sri lanka we borrow and then spend and and uh, those who borrowed they got their share also and then gave something to poor peanuts for people also so we were happy in going in that direction like greece and greece collapse mm-hmm. and there were uh, 27 countries in the european union because greece was a member of the european union 27 countries to rescue greece Greece also was also a member of the eurozone there are 19 countries in the eurozone so they were also uh, behind Greece to rescue Greece and other than that uh, the the european central bank which funded uh, so much billions of euro to buy those junk bonds and then to rescue Greece now i remember i wrote when sri lanka fell down fall down there will be no one to rescue us that's exactly what happened so uh, other countries fell down like that venezuela was one of them sri lankan people don't know much about venezuela the only reason for sri lankans to know about venezuela is the 
uh, as i think that venezuela was the country which produce the most number of world beauty queens <laughs> other than that there is no any other reason for sri lankans to know about venezuela but venezuela was a country which collapse due to economic crisis and recently another country that is lebanon lebanon and sri lanka we have much similarity source however uh, we knew that the country was going in this direction and why we knew that because we saw all the indicators like increased borrowings and then collapsing or declining export revenue and then you are earning incomes in rupees but you have borrowed in dollars now you have to pay in dollars so how to earn rupees and pay dollars very basic question we can't print dollars america can borrow more american actually americans have borrowed more than sri lanka but they can print dollars and pay off their debt but for us if you are going to pay off our foreign debt we have to earn foreign net change we have to earn dollars if we don't turn dollars we can't pay our foreign debt that's exactly where we were over the last 10 20 years going in this direction going to collapse in fact i would say that sri lanka would have collapsed long ago couple of times we came to that point but some somehow fortunately or to my understanding unfortunately something came up to rescue us so we didn't collapse but this time all the uh, domestic factors global factors were against sri lanka triggering our collapse so we adopted those populist policies borrowing and spending and borrowing and spending and we continue with that until we came to this point so without taking appropriate measures to uh, avoid the crisis that's why i said that this kind of budget reform is budget if we started that 10 12 years ago we would have not been in this crisis today uh, some economists have mentioned previously uh, that sri lanka must give independence to its uh, central bank and strengthen the fiscal management responsibility act of 2003 uh, do you think it's possible in the political context uh well there are uh, many impossibilities given our political context but ideally that should have been the case but we have seen how the central bank the governors have been appointed in this country and then uh, it also shows the integrity of the politicians who appoint them and if they get the central bank to print the money that they want easy way print and spend and then particularly if they don't know that the consequences of it so we would have been in the there is no no escape and we are already there in the in, the, in trouble so i think the central bank independence means now the government has to spend pay the public sector salaries pay the interest that they have borrowed previously and pay the uh, the the principal of those borrowings <coughs> and uh, give subsidies and pensions and samurdhi and all these things and at the same time take care of all these uh, capital expenditure roads railways public transport roads and all these things development thing, public investment so government does not have money to carry out all these things it doesn't want to tax people also that's why we had very low tax rates so uh, millions of people avoid taxes also not a problem of people but the problem of policy makers and with all these things the easy way to handle this one is to get the central bank and then ask the central bank to buy those government securities treasury bills and treasury bonds and then give money to the government which we call money printing because that is fresh money coming to the economy through the treasury from central bank through the treasury and with that 
you can see what we have uh, today the uh, asia's highest inflation rate is now in sri lanka and we have messed up so many other areas exchange rate interest rate together with that so that means the central bank's primary function is to not money printing but taking care of the value of the rupee in your pocket the value of the money that you have in your pocket there is a value for that and that value has to be protected by the central bank that is the primary objective of central bank now keeping that primary objective aside and printing money and getting those things as the politicians ask to spend in the country that is where the problem is so when the central bank is under the influence of the government or the treasury uh, and for this unholy alliance create problems for the entire nation each and every one get affected we all got affected because of that so it is better to have the uh, central bank independence true sir uh, so recent times we see a lot of uh, out migration from sri lanka labor out migration uh, what can we what are the impacts we can uh, expect due to this uh, out migration <laughs> i have a lot of things to say about this uh, out migration uh, is not a prosperity sign of the prosperity of the country it is the sign of the country's poverty and misery and hopelessness people leave the country but it is quite uh, bizarre that in this country we have appointed ministers we have established organizations and we have arranged different programs for those people and even now ministers uh, go around the world and looking for jobs for people so all these things to send more and more people abroad hmm. so we are buying the misery and poverty for this country the second point i want to highlight is i have never found any other country in the world which give education to people young people with public money and then for the development of australia this is the only country in the world which is doing that so with all the well i am not blaming anybody who is uh, leaving even i have many relatives family members left the country but i am not blaming them because they don't see a future Ninja. for them so that obviously when they don't see a future in their motherland whether they like it or not they want to leave so that's why we have seen a rapid increase in out, outward migration in the recent past so if we want to keep them here we have to establish a good progressive economic environment in this country number 1 number 2 our regulatory framework there is a problem there also we have opened the exit gate but our entry gate is closed and locked so which means our people can leave the country that gate is open but foreign talents when they even if they want to come to sri lanka we have closed the gate and locked it up many countries if you look around uh, well of course middle east there is nothing uh, new about it if you look at uh, uae united arab emirates dubai abu dhabi those cities are there 80% of people there foreigners the native emirati people they just enjoy the prosperity built by the <laughs> foreigners there and so the americans and british and those people undertake management positions and ceos and those higher rank uh, engineering and scientists and high rank positions there in the middle east 
middle rank some other east asian nations and indians and then lower rank labor see countries like philippines sri lanka we supply labor for lower rank and they all were for emirati the native people and native people enjoy the prosperity built by the foreigners if you look at some asian countries today like uh, singapore 40% of working people are foreign born why they have the policy called inviting foreign talents foreign talents they want to get foreign talent if those who are talented they can actually they are welcome in singapore also they are welcome in south korea they are welcome in other countries malaysia australia us they have opened their gates and we keep our gates closed so i think we should change that policy that is mostly due to nationalistic uh, sentiments do you think i think that is uh, nationalist yes pro nationalist sentiments are too much the reason is uh, we are like uh, we are like frogs living in a well because we don't see outside world uh, we don't have that exposure in our universities we don't have foreign professors working but if you go to any of these countries you will see foreign professors we don't have foreign students in our universities or higher educational institutes but if you go to any of those countries you will see foreign students studying together with that so they all mingle with them and the globalization so their thinking patterns will change with that but because we have kept this closed we are living in a, like frogs in the well so we see and we interpret that is our world and that is the 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 greatest country in the world so this is the outcome yes sir uh so uh finally uh, what prospects do you see in the world bank's plan to support the rebuilding of sri lanka's economy and creating a foundation for sustainable private sector led development as promised by david malpass the president of world bank in the recent cop 27 meeting they all are good world bank adb imf they all will help us if we are serious about what we want to do we have to show okay this is our program and just like the budget so we bring these reforms into our economic program the recovery program and if you have a credible economic program we can sell that to all these uh, multilateral organizations world bank adb IMF and also to uh, our friendly countries China India western european countries and also when we prepare programs to integrate with them more and more and open our economy so if you have that kind of uh, if you have that kind of uh, program in hand which is not yet with us okay we have a lot of uh, statements and enthusiasm to take these things and then if we show that okay we are in that direction doing all these reforms and bringing investors here establishing regulatory environment which is good for business and all these things then actually they all will support us otherwise they will wait and see so we the ball is in our court we have to play it first so i would like to extend my sincere gratitude to professor abey ratna on behalf of the bandaranaika center for international studies for taking time off his busy schedule today to enlighten us on the issues related to global recession and economic crisis mm-hmm.